Hi, this is a, a typical uh, Rolex process. In this case, we want to analyze data that uh, come from uh, banks. And the idea is uh, uh, finding uh, explicit model, no, uh, models uh, in order to understand why and who is the people that buy one particular financial product that is called P125. We have the data on uh, two different files. This, uh, this gray block uh, are for import uh, the data from external files, uh, database uh, or uh, some other data source directly inside the Rolex. And with this uh, blue block uh, is possible to analyze the data. Okay, here we see that we can uh, assess the data in uh, a spreadsheet form. And here we have a short description about the data. And we see that there is a typical CRM data with sex, marital status, other social demographical uh, information. And okay, here we have a column that is a, a feature extracted direct from the raw data. In this case, age come from a formula between the current year of the analysis and the birth, rate, uh, birth date of the customer. Uh, inside Data Manager is possible to perform different kinds of, uh, of uh, tasks, like uh, it's possible to have a filter inside data, it's possible to group, it's possible to perform any kind of SQL query without writing any kind of code is possible to plot the raw data and this plot are not for business intelligence but is for rapid understanding of the data and it, with the same approach is also possible to have uh, all the univariate statistics and a uh, big part of bivariate statistics inside our data manager that remember that the purpose of data manager is interacting with the raw data, make data inspection, data cleaning, and all the tasks related to the uh, data. With the same uh, approach, we can inspect what is the data inside the other files, and we find a typical transactional data. For each ID, we have uh, the different action that the ID perform during the time. In order to put together the two different data sources, we need to convert with this block all the transactional data in counting. And then in the output of this block, we have all the counting. And for each ID, we have uh, the different action that perform uh, during the time. Then the first ID have a one ATM card, zero deposit, one loan, he don't buy the product P125 and have a salary of uh, 1,802 uh, dollars. With this block we can perform a join also without writing any SQL code. Here it's possible to put different key with different operator and with different type of join. In the output of the join, we have a complete uh, overview of, the, of our customer. Before uh, running the machine learning approach, we need to split the data in two different data sets one for training and the other for test. It's really important to perform this kind of split because every machine learning algorithm have a lot of degree of freedom then it's very very good uh, when we try to analyze data that uh, uh, the system see before. Then the idea have here have a, a subset of data Okay, on which perform the training, and another bunch of data that we use only for test. Then, uh, in output, we can 
run our logic learning machine, that is our proprietary algorithm, and in the output we have these rules, very, very simple rules. Okay. Okay, now we can stop speaking about technicalities and we enter in the business meaning of uh, this uh, uh, demo. And okay, the first rules that we found for the people that buy the products, uh, the products 1P125 is if the salary is greater than 2258, then the people buy the products. And these rules explain about 49% of your customer with an error of 4.4%. The second rules okay, is more complex. And if you have more than two dependents and you have only a degree and your job is not in this list, then you buy the products and this explain about 30% of your customer with an error of 1.1%. Okay, then we can analyze all the rules and double check the rules with subject and matter expert. This is, is really important because at this stage we can put together the knowledge that comes from directly from the data with the knowledge of the subject matter export. And this is really important because now these rules are the better rules that is possible to, to, to produce. Okay, now if we are, uh, try to apply these rules uh, through this block to the test set, okay, we see that on the test set the system make a very good pre uh, provision on the zero class and on one class, okay? Here there is uh, uh, people that uh, don't buy the products and the, the, uh, the rules uh, predict that uh, they don't buy, and here the people that buy and the system understand that they buy. I want to show you that uh, in this case, we have a, an unbalanced problem. Okay, the people that buy in the past the, the products is less than the people that don't buy. Then, usually, when you are using uh, uh, the standard machine learning approach, for unbalanced input, you have unbalanced output. But in this case, in this real case, all the business value is belonging to the class with less uh, examples. Then the ability to predict very well also this class have a lot of, uh, of value. Then we can enter in more detail about the, uh, the forecast and here we can analyze all the test set and we see here that we, we have the here the predicted value and here the real value that we know from the uh, the, the database here we have green when the prediction is correct and otherwise is red Based on the number of uh, the pattern that uh, each uh, sample belong, it's possible also to build uh, a confidence uh, matrix. And if we make a order in terms of confidence, we see that uh, for high confidence, we have a lot of uh, green. With low confidence, we have a lot of red then it's possible, okay, put some filter and use only prediction with high confidence. And we see here that the total 
uh, accuracy of the forecast is uh, increasing. A common question uh, that arises is a, a comparison between logic learning machine, our proprietary algorithm, and another uh, machine learning approach that is called decision trees. In order to answer to this question, we can add a decision trees block to the system and we apply this block to the same input data that we have for logic learning machine. We run and we can make a comparison. The big difference between the two approach are that the children trees okay, start from one root and make a lot of dichotomic decision. Instead, a uh, logic learning machine is able to find pattern overlapped. Then one case is belonging to different pattern, and this is a, a more robust way to represent the data and with a lot of advantage. And for example, if we see the rules that come from the chisholm trees, we see that the number of rules are very, very high. For example, the number of rules that uh, exit from a logic learning machine is only uh, 45, but here there is like an order of magnitude greater than all the um, rules that come from the children trees is very complicated and the covering is very low in this case we have only one rule with the big covering but all the other rules are able to explain only only few cases when we apply the rules that come from the children trees to the test set, we can see okay, that for unbalanced input produce a very unbalanced output. Then uh, the children trees uh, uh, predict very well the class, class zero, the class without uh, business value, but very, very bad, the class one. Remember, this is the, the uh, confusion metrics about logic learning machine, that the performance on the class zero is uh, less, but uh, the performance on class one, the class with the business value, is greater than the children trees. Thank you very much.